And good afternoon. It's Wednesday. That means it's time for Helping Seniors of Brevard with Joe Steckler. Joe is off today. I'm John Harper along with uh, Carrie Fink, my co-host. And good afternoon, Carrie. How are you? Doing well, John. How are you doing today? Excellent. We're uh, continuing to uh, make sure we're uh, exercising proper distance between one another. So we continue to do that as we're broadcasting from different locations. And I understand, Carrie, we also have a special guest with us as well. Absolutely. I am so uh, pleased to uh, bring back to the radio uh, Dr. Lee Sheldon. As you know, Dr. Sheldon has been a friend of Helping Seniors. Uh, in fact, I think we were talking about it on a radio show or something not so long ago. Uh, just like John Harper, you got Joe Steckler started out in the radio business when, uh, like 20 years ago, uh, the story came out that uh, Joe was actually a TV uh, show guest on Dr. Sheldon's TV show years ago, and I guess Joe caught the bug, and that's how uh, uh, all the work that Joe has done for seniors over the years has has included radio and television. And so, uh, good afternoon, uh, Dr. Sheldon. How are you? Good, Carrie. How are you? And I did not realize that that was the beginning of Joe's broadcast career. Well, thank you. <laughs> You're the one responsible. <laughs> totally me. Hey, John, you take a lot of responsibility, too. <laughs> <laughs> John also, the by the way, John also got my son, <laughs> got my son initiated in broadcasting, and he's a professional broadcaster. So we all owe John a debt of gratitude. Well, yeah. thank you, Lee, and uh, your son did a great job for us uh, uh, when he first started at uh, WMEL, and we're very pleased to have him as part of our WMEL alumni. Well, thank you. He is now uh, at NBC, NBC Sports Northwest uh, in Portland, Oregon. Wow. Good, uh, good facility to be associated with, and I'm glad he's doing so well the next time you talk to him, uh, tell him I said hi. This is a good place for me to interject, uh, listeners, that there are some great uh, radio shows and TV shows that are available on the Helping Seniors website at helpingseniorsofbrevard.org, helpingseniorsofbrevard.org. And I was thinking, uh, John Harper, as you were telling that story, uh, that you also were instrumental in the career of a very famous comedian, and you told that story on a television show that you did with Joe Steckler a number of years back. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You you remember that. I had uh, forgotten that I uh, told that story to Joe. If you have time, I'll go ahead and yes. tell it. Uh, well, years ago when I was in Detroit at uh, WXYZ Radio, we also had WXYZ TV as well. And um, uh, they hosted a morning show, as uh, many uh, TV stations across the country did good morning shows. Uh, this was Good Morning Detroit. There's Good Morning Chicago, Good Morning San Francisco, Good Morning LA, Good Morning New York, uh, et cetera, et cetera. The list goes on and on. And uh, so they had a morning TV show from 9 to 10 a.m. called Good Morning Detroit. Well, we had an individual with us on the radio side who uh, basically, uh, he wasn't even a co-host. He did shtick on our morning show. Actually, our morning show was more designed for, for uh, news and uh, uh, talk. Uh, it really wasn't designed uh, to, uh, to go into comedy necessarily, but uh, this individual was uh, with us and uh, he would do uh, some comedy on our morning show on WXYZ. So um, one day uh, after he got off the air from our uh, radio show, he went downstairs uh, where the TV station was located and uh, spoke to some of the people down there, and they said, why don't you uh, uh, fill in for our morning team? Uh, it was a husband and wife team. They're going to be going on vacation for two weeks, and why don't you fill in for them and see how it goes? So he agreed to that, and uh, he filled in for two weeks, and Nothing really came about it. In the meantime, he was doing for me a show called uh, Comedy 
on the line. This was being done late Sunday night, early Monday morning, where we would uh, test drive, so to speak, uh, talk shows and talk show hosts and and, uh, see how they would air with our audience. So he's doing this uh, program on early Monday morning in reality, 12 midnight to 1 a.m., called Comedy on the Line. And uh, about a month after he had done the TV fill-in for the morning show on the television side, he got a call from New York uh, because we were owned by ABC Radio and Television. He got a call from New York and said, uh, they said, why don't you come on in and we'd like to talk to you and we'd like to have you pitch a show for us. Well, he went ahead and uh, went into New York and uh, spoke to the executives at ABC Television, and he did a, uh, a pitch for a show that he had worked on and had come up with. Uh, he shot a pilot for it. It was uh, then uh, proven to be very successful as a pilot, and uh, it went on as part of the regular lineup on ABC television for many years. Um, and so the bottom line to the story is uh, uh, this individual, pretty well known, done a lot of things over the years after he did uh, shtick for us on WXYZ radio um, and has uh, garnered quite a name for himself. Uh, many people first knew him as the tool time man but in reality, his real name is Tim Allen, and that's how he got started. See, I love it because uh, because that, that's a sign that you guys have been instrumental in launching some amazing careers in broadcasting. So one of the things we wanted to talk about today was that during the uh, – during this COVID-19 time, and that's really the focus of our show, it just shows how important communications are when we talk about radio and all the different outreaches for uh, helping seniors. Joe has always been uh, instrumental in making sure that we're visible in as many areas as we can be, and that means uh, that's why we do the television that broadcasts three times a day on Space Coast Government TV. It's why, John, we do the radio shows on WEJF FM radio station every week. And um, really, I think the, uh, the thing that, that we want to ask while we have the pleasure of Dr. Sheldon's time to be with us today mm-hmm. is that I know things are starting to move back in a way that you're able to start seeing patients again, Dr. Sheldon. But how are things different now? How are you working to keep your staff safe, keep patients safe, and all the changes that, that are coming through with this, with this, uh, this whole pandemic? Well, certainly this was not done without preparation. There were a lot of things. Everybody now knows what PPE is. You know, eight weeks ago, nobody knew what PPE meant. But uh, now personal protective equipment is the name of the game. Um, For us, it was a bit difficult getting the personal protective equipment that we needed. Um, And But as long as we ordered it well enough in advance, then when we were able to go back on May 4th, which was when the governor allowed us to come back, then we had the personal uh, protective equipment here. But I've got to tell you, you know, the the biggest – the biggest concern that we have, and I, I know it, it sounds, it'll sound a little bit strange, but but I'm going to, I'll explain it so I think it'll make sense. The bigger concern that I had at the beginning was my staff, because my staff is the one who encounters patients for eight or nine hours a day, and so my entire goal here was to make sure that our staff was was comfortable and that they were protected. Um, and by doing that, then I knew that the patients would feel good. Staff feels good, patients feel good. So. Besides the personal protective equipment, so we've got the face shields and we've got the KN95 masks and and we've we 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 bought gowns and we bought uh, we now have two washers and two dryers so that whenever we do a procedure that produces an aerosol, um, that gown is changed and 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 people put on a new gown and so I have a behind the scenes staff that has become uh, uh, laundry uh, laundry people um, and we have a laundry schedule. 
Um, we, 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 for the staff, we also, because kids couldn't go to school, we hired a preschool teacher. So the preschool teacher is, is next door and is uh, teaching the, is, is working with the kids with their virtual school. So there was a lot of preparation here uh, to do this correctly. But, but the next thing I wanted to do was to make sure that we reduce the aerosols. It's one thing to, to prevent you from breathing it in, but isn't it better not to have it in the air entirely? Entirely. So I actually have in each room a suction device, it's almost like it's a big vacuum cleaner that's positioned over the uh, patient's face, about 8 to 12 inches from the patient's face. And it's hooked up to something that is like a HEPA filter, but it's even finer than a HEPA filter called, the, called an ULPA filter. So ULPA, ULPA filter. So that when we're doing any thing that produces an aerosol, which would be um, the Capitron, which is the ultrasonic scaler, or if we're doing any procedures that are using the dental handpiece, that the water that's going into the mouth and then bounces out of the mouth is being sucked up by this vacuum cleaner rather than going into the air, um, which... It, 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 and and staff has noticed it right away because water that would ordinarily end up with the chin uh, on the chin wasn't on the chin anymore. It was going into the vacuum cleaner, which was neat. Uh, and then we put in some filtration w within our HVAC so that any anything that that that, that remains, um, which would be dust particles or or viruses or bacteria, um, would hit some electric some uh, charged hydrogen peroxide that comes out of the HVAC and so that coalesces all of this into a bigger ball and then that's 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 taken up by by the filtration system so we feel pretty good that we're protecting the staff and the staff uh, which who was were, were a little bit reluctant when they first came in um, uh, felt a lot better. Now, I did preface it with about an hour and a half lecture, mm -hmm. giving them the science behind what we're doing. And uh, I, once we got done with that lecture, which was, it took me hours to prepare it because I had to go to the medical literature and, and went to the CDC and, and went to different places where, where we had um, uh, we had some references. Um, once we did that, educated them, let them know what was there, um, then then things were a lot better. And of course, I educated my patients by sending them out an email, letting them know everything that we're doing as well. As a result, last week we in in our first week back, we had 50% more new patients calling in that first week than we'd have in our best week before. Uh, before the season. This week on Monday, we had nearly um, uh, the same number of new patients <laughs> calling in on Monday for new patients that we'd have for an entire week. So people are ready to get back. People are ready to get back to normal. Whatever that new normal is, they're ready to come back, and we are just as busy as could be. You know, that's great. That is so good to hear. And I think that's it. I think everybody has been doing their best to follow the governor's uh, precautions about COVID-19, staying home, doing the things, washing the hands, wearing the face mask, everything that they're they're asking us to do to, to not only keep ourselves safe, but the people around us safe. And you actually wrote an article that's in uh, the May edition of the Helping Seniors newsletter, and you were talking about this very topic. It's called Dentistry after the coronavirus. And you were talking about the fact that in the United States, there's a, actually 200,000 dentists. And um, so you, you were really uh, making the point in the article, same as you're doing here, that uh, you wrote it's incumbent upon us as dentists to not only diagnose well and do appropriate treatment, but to give patients the reassurance that the dental environment is safe and that treatment can continue without hesitation in the dental environment. And I guess that's going to be part of this uh, this new uh, opening things back up now that we're in phase one, as I guess um, reassuring everybody we can do all this stuff safely, right? I think so. Um, I, 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 there are going to be some patients who are going to be reluctant. I don't blame them. And those who are at the, at, at the, in the risk category where they're still immune compromised. Yeah. I mean, I would be careful too. Although, you know, we're so fortunate. We live in Brevard County. We have lived in a Brevard County have what fewer than 330 cases out of 600,000 people. And unfortunately nine deaths, but these are if we weren't keeping track of this internationally 
this would be a non-event in our county, which just says we picked the right county to live in. You know, we just did. Uh, does does that mean that we shouldn't be careful? Yeah, we, we we should we should always be careful. And I think some of the things we put in place uh, to make sure that we're 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 careful and not transmitting it from 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 person to person. I think those are generally good ideas. The new disciplines that we put into our office, I think these are good universal dif- disciplines anyway. So there is a silver lining here, but the mm-hmm. biggest silver lining is that when Ellen and I moved here, we decided to come to Brevard County. It was. It's a great place, and obviously, it's a place where the virus doesn't like to, um, like doesn't like to spend time. Good for us. <laughs> That's right. We uh, we we have done this show in such a way that um, we're also going to be talking with in the second half of the show. We're also going to be talking with Barb McIntyre of Reverse Mortgages, and you know, it's interesting how everybody has made it through and adapted and figured out ways to do things uh, on a sense that. Um, that really works well, you know, we're innovative. We're figuring out the right ways to do things safely and such. And so I know from talking with Barb, when we did a helping seniors update earlier, she mentioned that, uh, that, that they have really been able to help people, you know, financially during this crisis, because uh, obviously as people are trying to figure out what to do, then the reverse mortgage becomes an option to take a serious look at. And I guess the same way we also talked with, um, Board certified uh, elder law attorney uh, Bill Bill Johnson on a on a the radio show last week, and he was talking a little bit about the fact that um, they have really gone into super sanit- sanit- sanitation uh, sanitization uh, processes of doing things like they're able to meet uh, patients uh, at the car for signing and having the notary come out to the car, and it's it's just amazing to see how the innovation happens to make sure that, that we can get these essential services done. And I really believe that uh, dentistry is one of those essential services. You know, at one time, I mean, now we have corporations all over the place, but at one time dentistry was the largest mom and pop business in the United States. No longer. Now we've got corporate dentistry here, but uh, you know, now it's about 50, 50, uh, but that's a lot of people. It's a lot of professionals working together. Um, and and doing what they can and what we can and um, you know it's 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 good and it's good for us and it's good for our patients and I'm just so happy the patients are here. Doctor uh, Doctor Sheldon uh, John Harper here. Uh, uh, you mentioned a moment ago uh, Brevard County has uh, some of the lowest numbers being reported from the COVID nineteen, uh, whether it be uh, reported cases or the uh, number of, of deaths. Uh, is there any rhyme or reason why you feel Brevard County is uh, one of the lowest uh, in the state and uh, uh, perhaps in the nation? You know, I don't, I don't, I don't know if there's rhyme or reason here, John. Um, I do know that, uh, despite what you may hear, that that a virus does have a certain environment that it likes to live in. And I think there's a certain amount of transmissibility that occurs when you're in close quarters. And so close quarters is Miami, and we're seeing more of it there. But, you know, here things are are nice and rather spread out. And uh, that may be part of it. Part of it is the warm climate. And I'm sure there's a lot of it that we have no idea. Um, But um, it's it's fortunate that we're here. So the the warm climate... uh... Uh, is uh, portraying good things for us right now, but uh, in reality, come the fall or winter uh, for the nation, it could be uh, round two, as we've been hearing quite a bit about lately, of the uh, COVID-19 making a very serious return to our nation. You know, I've got to look at that, and I've got to look at the vested interests that, that are looking for that to happen. Viruses generally have a life cycle, and they have a single life cycle. And this comes not not from me; it comes from the French epidemiologist who um, was also looking at hydroxychloroquine and had some good results with hydroxychloroquine, uh, um, zithromycin, and zinc. And his claim, and it's a very true claim, is that uh, H1N1 had the same single cycle. Um, Many of these viruses had the same single cycle. But if you want to sell a vaccine, how about telling everybody that the virus may come back? 
I think it's a good PR point. And if you got uh, Gates Foundation spending ten billion dollars to make sure that vaccines are are given universally over the next ten years, um, all right, call me a conspiracy theorist, but I have a feeling that there may be a self fulfilling prophecy that's here. Um, so could it come back? Yeah, of course, anything can happen. We really don't know, but history would tell us that for most of these viruses, they are. Um, you know, they they have single cycles. Even if we look at the flu vaccine, you know, we we're we're supposed to be taking a flu vaccine every year, but the flu vaccine is a different vaccine um, from year to year, depending upon what they predict the new flu virus is going to be, or a virus which, in this case, I'm I'm disagreeing with myself, which might recycle itself. Um, you know, it comes down to who's who's the presidential candidate. The um, oh, he was the billionaire who ran for president uh, twenty twenty five years ago, who said, "Follow the money trail, follow the money trail." And I think uh, those kinds of comments, I, I, I've Ross, got to look at that. Ross as, Perot? Yeah, Ross Perot. That's right. Yeah, right. Um, yeah. I, you know, I, we'll know in a year whether 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 the threat is correct or whether what I just said is correct, but. Um, Right now, I, I'm I'm going to say I have some um, I have considerable doubts. Well, in all cases, as we're as we're talking about this today in Brevard County, and we are in phase one reopening uh, that the governor uh, has now allowed. I think people are able to actually maybe consider uh, going out and doing a few things that we weren't uh, supposed to be doing a couple of weeks ago. And I guess I remember we, you and I, Dr. Sheldon, we did a helping seniors update, um, as sort of toward the beginning of all this. And you were explaining that you were still finding the dentist office quite busy because although you weren't supposed to be uh, seeing any patients unless it was an emergency, those emergencies kept those emergencies just happened regardless. They did, and and frankly, the the, the worst part about this for dental patients is. And it really kills me that we were considered to be a non-essential profession. <laughs> it kind of kind of takes the winds out of my wind out of my sails, but not for too long, <laughs> because you know people if they are, are ignoring their dental health, and we're seeing patients who have periodontal disease, which for the most part is a chronic disease that you have to keep after, and all of a sudden we're saying, oh well, you don't really need to come to see us. Um, that's not really true. So, um, yes, while we were busy with emergencies, the definition of emergency emergency was pain or infection. And who wants to let things go to the point where you have pain, pain and infection? So, um, uh, yeah, we were busy. I mean, we weren't busy as a business. We were busy. Uh, serving serving others because uh, even the dental emergency clinics weren't open during this time. So, you know, we have we have a surgeon, uh, a board certified surgeon, and even me. We even got me as a backup. Um, at least we we're there to be able to serve the community, and and at least I felt useful during that time. Right. Well, one of the things that's interesting too, because for the Helping Seniors Organization, Kim Bernard, who's our education specialist. Uh, She, uh, you know, clearly for the same reason, because our senior resource center offices are co-located with Zon Beachside. And of course, none of the restrictions as far as um, assisted livings or those kind of facilities have been lifted and probably won't be for quite some time. So we made the decision, even though we're in a separate wing of the facility, uh, that that uh, for safety and all the other things that we wouldn't take walk in appointments, but the uh, helping seniors. Uh, helpline is still wide open at 321-473-7770. Uh, again, that number is 321-473-7770. And she has been quite busy taking a lot of calls from people, you know, on all sorts of things, finding, uh, especially early on when they were being very strict about staying at home, uh, making sure that we had a way to get uh, seniors connected to food resources, or things like that, especially if they were told they weren't really supposed to be able to go out. So again, it's 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 interesting to see how much uh, people have risen to the occasion, and I'm really pr- proud of how uh, people in Brevard County have have done their best to uh, stick to the uh, prescribed course about staying safe, but making sure that we uh, that we're still finding some way to to, to keep moving through it all. Dr. Sheldon, uh, John Harper here again. Uh, periodontal disease is a common problem of those who are high risk, especially. Uh, and I've heard uh, throughout the years that 
gum disease can cause heart problems as well. What are you trying to do to educate and advise patients and those listening to us right now how to uh, avoid those problems and uh, remain stronger in being able to combat the COVID-19 if, uh, if they come in contact with it? Well, you know, it's interesting, John, because there may actually be a relationship between the, um, the, 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 the virus and periodontal disease as well. Um, we don't know that for a fact, but there's some indications. It was not long ago that we thought that it was only plaque that caused periodontal disease, and plaque is bacteria. It's not food. It's just bacteria. Um, in recent years, and it's not that recent anymore, it's probably 15 or 20 years ago, a, a periodontal virologist, okay? So we've got a periodontal, a person who's a periodontist, and he studied viruses, he studied bacteria as well, found that there were three viruses that were related to periodontal disease. And that if we couldn't get it under control from a bacterial standpoint, mm -hmm. which is amp antibiotics and deep cleaning, then... The other way of getting under control is to take antiviral drugs. Not only that, but antiviral drugs may be as simple as taking, and I mentioned this once, and everybody do not take, d d d you, listen to me very carefully, that you can take Clorox bleach and dilute it down by 30 times. That means one part bleach to 30 times. 30 parts water and so you're diluting it down to a strong pool water and that actually becomes an antiviral agent so what did i do when i when we when this virus came uh, came out i contacted somebody who is a friend of this virologist who by the way is retired now he retired about three years ago to get his take on the disease and certainly one of the things that he was recommending was to three times a day, particularly for dental staff, was to take this weak mm -hmm. dilution of bleach, rinse out three times a day. Um, essentially, you're rinsing with it the th for 30 seconds, three times a day. And he was also recommending that we take betadine swabs, swabs of betadine, uh, dipped in a Q-tip, and put them in our nostrils three times a day. So I tried to go to the best periodontal source that I could to be able to, uh, to, to be able to help us. Um, with regard to the relationship between that disease and heart disease, we don't know whether it's the virus itself um, or whether the virus itself with uh, respiratory disease is the whole thing or part of the thing. I think research is going to have to be done. But we do know that the bacteria that causes periodontal disease has thus far been related to heart disease, diabetes, kidney disease, liver disease, pulmonary disease, and Alzheimer's disease. So uh, we're doing more and more, not me, but certainly the periodontal researchers and now those Kerry, researchers in medicine to, uh, who are associated thank, with those diseases. Uh, uh, Dr. Sheldon, we're out of time. Kerry Fink, okay. uh, we're going to have to say goodbye to uh, Dr. Sheldon. Very interesting conversation. Look forward to having him back next time here on Helping Seniors of Brevard. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. And that music gets us back in the mood of uh, jumping around here and uh, listening to some uh, good sounds from Glenn Miller from way gone back in years. But right now, let's get back into the show of Helping Seniors of Brevard. I'm John Harper, and once again, here's Carrie Fink with our special guest in this half hour, Barbara McIntyre. Carrie? Thank you, John. It's uh, always good to be here. And on behalf of Joe Steckler and the entire Helping Seniors team, you know, we've been on this theme about COVID-19 for, for a while. And I'm so glad uh, we were recording uh, a Helping Seniors update, one of those things that we're doing on the, uh, on the uh, website. 
uh, and put, putting those out every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And I had the privilege of talking with um, Kim Bernard, who's our education specialist. And we spent a long, uh, we spent a lot of time talking about uh, what's going on now that we're in this full phase one reopening. And so uh, if you remember, we've uh, on Helping Seniors Radio, we've talked with Bill Johnson about this. Uh, Dr. Lee Sheldon has, has talked a lot about uh, how his practice is adjusted with all this. And today uh, we have the privilege of having another longtime friend of Helping Seniors, Barb McIntyre, of uh, reverse mortgage uh, expertise with us here today. How are you, Barb? I'm very good to thank you, and I'm really glad to say family and friends, everyone staying healthy, and you guys look real good, too. So. <laughs> thank you. So, John, you know, John Harper, we've talked a lot along the way about uh, some of the, just the ways we've had to change around some of the work that we've done. For example, how we record the radio show and all, and Barb has been part of that all, you know, from before we had to go to the extra uh, extra steps of doing it this way. And I was thinking it's really changed even what we do in the radio business a bit. It uh, sure is, Carrie. And uh, I know virtually every radio station across the country is, uh, is doing this type of a uh, broadcast where they're doing it from at home or from some other location other than being inside the actual radio station. So it's really changed uh, quite a bit uh, the way and the means of which uh, broadcasting is done on radio. And it uh, overall, Carrie, seems to be working pretty well. I know Jim Votro is at our uh, Suntree Studios, and uh, he's there putting everything together for us. And from there, we send the program on to our uh, transmitter site located in Palm Bay. So we're all across Brevard County here, but it's working. It's good that we have a way for everybody to stay in communications. And I know, Barb McIntyre, when we were uh, all together on the radio uh, a few weeks back, kind of in the thick of the lockdown, and now we're getting into this reopening phase, I, I remember you were explaining that you really had an ability to, uh, to, to still help a lot of people in the middle of all that because you were able to use technology as well. Right, that's exactly the, the case, and uh, you know, if a if a client has a computer and you can walk them through getting on a Zoom, uh, inviting them to a Zoom meeting, then you're actually looking at them face to face, and then you have the ability to show them numbers and walk through it. So, I'm glad to say though that now, as we start to loosen up a little bit, and we still practice all of our um, you know, regulations the CDC's given us for masking and gloves and distancing, it really is nicer to be able to sit at that kitchen table and really be able to explain the product. And what's going on now is the calls I'm getting. People, uh, you know, they might have had small little part-time jobs to supplement their retirement, and those jobs have gone away. So it's not just the younger folks that are out of work and missing that additional income. And I'm finding people very nervous about wanting to have a resource to supplement the lack of, of the little bit of income they had coming in. And banks right now are not wanting to give uh, borrowers a line of credit against their home. So I'm, I'm seeing a lot of inquiry about the reverse mortgage, and I'm really glad that we have all these different ways to be able to bring the information to people that ask about it because it's well, important they understand options. You know, that's one of the things that you've impressed upon us along the way about the value of reverse mortgages. I remember you were explaining to Joe on a, on a radio program that you had uh, made sure that you set this up early on so that you would have it as kind of a, uh, I guess I would call it almost an insurance policy, a safety cushion, a way to, to manage your finances at a time of need. And any of that preparation really seems to be a, a worthwhile effort. Exactly, and that's what people that have, that have been that have done that in the past set up a line of credit that they didn't really need at the time when their retirement funds have taken a, a big downturn. They don't want to take dividends out of their, you know, start drawing on their retirement accounts when their value is less. So being able to borrow from the equity in their house at this time is really beneficial. And then they can go back to the, uh, the regular way once everything recovers. 
But you're right, it is an insurance policy. It can be used so many ways. And I always say knowledge is power. So being able to have so many different ways to bring the information to anybody that wants to know, whether it's in a Zoom meeting over a computer, um, you know, just meeting in a variety of ways to just answer questions, just talk on the phone. So I'm uh, actually quite busy and I'm pleased to uh, be, be taking the information to my fellow Brevardians. <laughs> you, you know, I was, I was thinking that you, you, you go a long way back with helping seniors. And I remember <laughs> Joe at first, who's always very, very careful to, um, to, to be, to be on focus about uh, protecting seniors. And I remember he was highly skeptical at first and, and really kind of uh, put you over the, over the uh, coals to make sure that uh, number one, this was a legitimate product and a good, you know, because I guess we all had maybe seen some things early on that wasn't real good press about reverse mortgages. Right. And you were able to really, you really developed a, an expertise and a knowledge and know how to navigate it. And you, you just, you were able to dispel a lot of, uh, uh, common misconceptions or maybe things that maybe were a problem early on, I guess. Right. And, and in addition, I continue to go to visit with uh, Brevard residents, seniors who may even already have their reverse mortgage, but they maybe they uh, obtain the reverse mortgage through a company that wasn't local and they don't have a good understanding of what they did. And just this week, I went and sat uh, with a woman who uh, was already working with another lender, but she just wasn't confident that she was getting a full understanding. And after sitting with me, I went through her numbers. I showed her what I could do for her, but she was really close to being ready to close the loan, and she just needed to close the loan. So I told her, you know what, tell that other company that this is what I can offer you and get him to match it. And you know what she did? That's exactly right. She told them, I can have this interest rate. It gives me an additional $5,000 to tap into. Can you match it? And the other company said yes. And she called me the next day and thanked me profusely for coming and explaining this mortgage to her. So you're right. I, I Really, my mission is to make sure that that anyone that wants to talk, wants to consider this product fully understands it. And it isn't right for everyone, but right now it is, if you own a home and you have equity in it and you're planning to stay in your home, it is a real option to look into tapping into some of your own, your own invested money. Cause your house is part of what you've invested in for your retirement. You might as well use a little of it. Well, and as long as I follow this along correctly, too, as I understand, you go, you can go set all this up, and then it is totally up to you whether you access the funds or not. But I remember you explaining it makes more sense to set all this up early because uh, it gives you a, a, a larger, uh, I guess, lifetime value potential uh, for what you have in your home. Yeah, it really does. I The line of credit is a feature within the reverse mortgage that doesn't exist in any other type of uh, financial product with a line of credit. And it just continues to provide more borrowing power. So someone that's from 62 to 72 to even in their 80s may not actually need to draw on the funds until they need long-term home health care. And that's when it can be a windfall of available money that they don't have to qualify for or repay because the house repays it when they leave. And the misconceptions of the bank buying your home, that's not so, or there's no money left for your children, that rarely, rarely happens. The home, home Homes appreciate now. We don't see huge depreciation. So it's very unlikely that someone would outlive um, and, the, and the debt couldn't be paid back. So knowledge is power. It's just great to, to have resources. And, you know, I'm definitely here and available to answer questions anytime. You know, I was going to. I was going to say, John Harper, uh, you've you've uh, worked together side by side with uh, Joe Steckler. I mean, going way back into the Brevard Alzheimer's days and things like that. And we both know that Joe 
has always been really strong about information is the key. And that's why Joe has always been so uh, focused on doing uh, all media, however we can get the word out, whether we do it, uh, you know, in the newsletter, the Helping Seniors newsletter that we publish every month in Senior Scene. Uh, Joe, I think you got Joe started on the radio shows all those years ago, but that really is the key, isn't it, John? Absolutely, Carrie, and it's so important with what you and Barbara are talking about today. We've had Barbara as a guest many times on the show, but I think now more than ever, the information that Barbara is forthcoming with as far as the reverse mortgages is very important uh, considering the economic times that we're in right now, what we could be facing in the future. Uh, not trying to be pessimistic, but some people paint a very uh, dull or dark picture of the next uh, 12 to 24 months as mm. far as economy, and therefore the reverse mortgage could be extremely effective. On the other hand, there are a lot of people that say just the opposite. Things will uh, uh, continue to improve, and I'm sure they will in many respects. But nonetheless, this uh, COVID-19 virus, uh, Carrie and Barb, has really hit us hard in so many different ways, some ways in which are still undetected as far as what could be happening to, uh, to our economy, to our uh, nation in general, and to the world for that matter. So reverse mortgages, something that I think people should pay very close attention to, even if it's uh, something that you're not considering right now, you may be considering it down the road. So what Barbara has to say today, Carrie Fink, is very, very important. You know, I so agree with that because I was thinking about how uh, Joe has really assembled a team of, of experts uh, who are providing really valuable information as we go through this. And I was thinking, uh, Barb McIntyre, that, that what you bring to the table and your understanding of reverse mortgages, whether the economy goes great, which I really hope it would, uh, as, as John is saying, it, then the worst case is you've set something up that you're going to be able to work with and have available. But if it were to turn south on the other side, then you need that kind of help more than ever. And the key is preparation, right, Barb? Right. That's exactly right. And I, I'm an optimist. I like to believe that we're going to come on the other side of this and everything's going to rebound nicely. That's what I want to see and, and pray for everyone. But we just don't know. And so if things do stay tight, if, if people still stay laid off, if people are, you know, slow to get back out and, and start putting money back into the economy, you know, you, you, it is preparation is just says it all. You, you sleep better knowing you've got something to fall back on. And it's always good to have options. Right. Always good to have options. Yeah. That's right. That's right. You know, I was thinking about there's a there's a meme running around on Facebook these days, and it's a, it's a picture from Back to the Future, and the doc is there with Marty McFly, and, and he's saying, whatever you do, Marty, don't go to 2020, because nobody, nobody knew what was going to be around the bend. And I was thinking about that, because if, if you had told us, sitting in the radio studio maybe 60 days ago, that we would have been in lockdown and been through all this, we, we probably would have laughed and said, oh, that's not really going to, that sounds like something out of a science fiction movie. But at the same time, uh, here we are. And so what both of you are saying is right. It makes all the sense to prepare for right. really any eventuality. And I guess, Barb, I'm asking you this as sort of the expert on this. Is there a downside to sitting down to talk with you and just say, well, here's my situation. Here's where we are in our home. Here's what here's what here's where I stand. I still have a mortgage. I do this. I mean, what are the parameters? Who should give you a call? Really, anybody that owns a home that wants to continue living in their home, particularly if they have a mortgage and they're trying to make mortgage payments and they're they might be really struggling with having that being able to make the mortgage payments. I know forbearance is being done right now on on some people that aren't able to make a payment, but that won't continue. And if we if you can use a reverse mortgage to eliminate the necessity to make a mortgage payment, then you have really secured uh, a, a much better future. Uh, a secure future. And the thing people need to understand about reverse mortgages is that you can make payments. So if you use a reverse mortgage to eliminate the, the, the required monthly mortgage payment to a lender, 
with a reverse, you can still make a mortgage payment when you have the money. So you just have so much more security and flexibility. And to really answer your question, Carrie, if, you know, if someone calls me on the phone, I listen far more than I talk. You wouldn't know that to talk to me on the radio. <laughs> but a lot of listening goes on because the reverse mortgage is tailor-made to meet the needs of whoever calls on the phone. And even if I say, you know what, it's not the best solution for you, at least I've really listened to your scenario and given you guidance on what options you might take. So the phone call is all it takes. And I think that's an important part of all this, too, is that I've, I've really understood that people who really uh, care about doing the right thing for seniors like yourself or people like uh, Bill Johnson, board certified elder law attorney, who's a regular guest with uh, Joe. I mean, there's, there's a real feeling like we need to get you the right information, because if you make it sometimes just not knowing you could make a huge mistake and, and maybe take the wrong approach. I, I, I still love to laugh at the story. Of the of the fellow who called you from California after seeing uh, you on Helping Seniors TV with Joe, I, I guess they found it on YouTube, and he calls and says, "I'm watching you on TV." But it, but the point of the besides it being slightly creepy, maybe at first, <laughs> it was it was an interesting thing because clearly you were able to communicate uh, very effectively about the value of reverse mortgages and why. People should take the time to give you a call. It doesn't cost anything, right, to sit down no. and explore. It does not cost a thing. I, I, you know, whether I go to someone's home or meet them, that they come to my office, it just doesn't matter. Now, there's never a fee to get the information. It's my pleasure. And so, how do people get in touch with you? What's the best What's the best approach if they say, "Listen, I'd like to sit down and tell you where I'm at and see if this might might be a tool that I should consider." The, the first thing they should do is just pick up their phone and call me, and that phone number is 321-259-7880. Again, 321-259-7880, and we just talk on the phone. And that's a great place to start. Absolutely. Carrie, uh, uh, if I could, uh, with Barbara McIntyre as our special guest here this afternoon. Barbara, many times uh, during interviews, I always like to ask of a success story, something that uh, uh, you've experienced with the many clients that you've handled over the years. What kind of stands out in your mind as one of your favorite success stories of a client with a reverse mortgage that you have helped? Well, I'll tell you, I've been working with this product for over 15 years, and there are many <laughs> success stories. But I would say when somebody is struggling, really struggling to make a mortgage payment and in fear of foreclosure or just not having what they need to get the payment made, and then have what they need to buy, you know, left over in the month to buy their medicine and their and food. And they're having to make those kinds of decisions. It happens more than I would like to say. When I can do a reverse mortgage and eliminate that mortgage payment, and now that person knows that they are no longer going to have to struggle you can see them just a weight lifted off them and that's what I've experienced time and time again there's just so many stories that uh, I could write a book I can tell you <laughs> I'm sure it would be a bestseller as well um, uh, Barbara when someone approaches you for a reverse mortgage and you said many times they're faced uh, with a dire situation. They're up against the wall, so to speak. How long does the entire process take uh, take place? I mean, from the time they first contact you, from the time then that the reverse mortgage is finalized, what length of period of uh, time are we looking at? Sometimes it can actually take as little as 30 days to have someone through the process and closing their reverse mortgage. Now, there might be other circumstances that cause their problem, like let's say they have some real bad credit issues that need to be resolved before we can get them 
where they need to be. That could add some time. But just about everything can be resolved in order to close that loan. My, my general closing period is within a 30-day time frame for just about every one of my clients. Barbara, are the banks and the uh, various mortgage companies that hold mortgages on homes condos, whatever it may be, um, are they willing to work with the person who's looking to uh, get the reverse mortgage if they're uh, late on their payment or they're not able to make their payment this month or next month, as long as the bank sees that they're working toward the reverse mortgage and the finalization of that, will they have some uh, leniency and understanding? Yes, they, they absolutely do. And they understand what, you know, even though local lenders, your Banks of America and, and Wells Fargo's don't currently do reverse mortgages any longer, they certainly understand how they work. So to loss mitigation, trying to make sure they don't have to yeah. foreclose is really on the forefront with them as well. And they definitely understand and that helps them take the pressure off of that borrower when they see that we're in that process. So, yeah. So it really makes all the sense in the world as we uh, get towards the end of the show here uh, on this part of it uh, that people should give you a call. It's not going to, yeah. the worst thing is you're going to say, well, that's not the thing for me, but then at least you've scoped it out and you know once more right. time, what is that phone number? It's 321 259 7880. Again, 321 259 7880. Well, as always, Barb McIntyre, thanks for being with us on the radio show. We're out of time. On behalf of Joe Steckler and the whole team, we just want to say thank you for being part of Helping Seniors. Thank you, John Harper. Thank you, Jim Votro on the uh, board. And hope you guys have a great week ahead. We'll see you next week on Helping Seniors Radio.